When reactions happen, the functional group often changes. And as we've seen in the last few problems, you can use IR spectroscopy to identify what functional groups are in a molecule based on the shadows they cast. So, in other words, you can use IR spectroscopy to see if a reaction has happened or how far a reaction has happened based on the functional groups that show up in the IR spectrum. So that's what they're asking you to do in this exercise, exercise 1514. It says describe how IR spectroscopy might be used to monitor the progress of each of the following reactions. How f did the reaction go forward? How far forward? Etc. So on the left here, you want to look at the functional groups and you want to list the type of absorptions that that functional group would have. An alcohol has in a brew, smooth, broad absorption. Between 3,200 and 3,600. Oops. Wave numbers. So that's what you'll have on the left side of this reaction. The reactants, that's what would show up in that, in that, the IR spectrum for that. I mean, you'd have other absorptions. You'd have that classic absorption just to the right of 3,000 because you have sp hybridized carbons with hydrogens on them, right? But those also will appear in your product, and so it won't help you to distinguish between the two. So we'll focus on the functional groups. That, especially the ones that change. On the right, notice the functional group you have here, that's a carboxylic acid. And a carboxylic acid has two, two functional groups. First, you have that smooth spike, I'm sorry, the, the sharp spike at around 17, or the dip, around 1700 wave numbers. That's your first difference. And then you have a very broad absorption, takes up around the, a third of the spectrum between 2200 oops, and 3600 wave numbers. So as the reaction happens, what would you notice? If the reaction worked, if this was completely successful and all of these molecules turned into the product, then you would have a peak at 1700, a dip at 1700 wave numbers, and you'd have that very broad dip between 2,200 and 3,600. If the reaction didn't work, if you put everything in the pot and you, you know, did your incantations and the reaction didn't happen nonetheless, then all you'd have is that smooth, broad absorption between 3,200 and 3,600. So a lot of these organic molecules are clear liquids, so you can't just with your eyes tell what molecule you have, but you can put part of the sample underneath the R spectrum, and you can see how far the reaction has happened as, uh, as based on the, the shadows that it casts. Now, it could happen that it's not a perfect reaction. Not all of the reactant turns into product. And so you can even get a sense of the proportion that happens based on how strong these signals are. As the reaction goes forward, this signal will become weaker, and these will become stronger. Um, so you can even get a sense for how far the, qualitatively, how far the reaction has gone forward based on that. So that's A. Oops. All right, we follow the same procedure for this next one. We want to look for what functional groups we have on the left and what functional groups we have on the right. Now, we have this nitrogen. This is an amine. And if you notice, it is a secondary amine Oops. because it's bonded to one, two other carbons. So a secondary amine. So what you'd expect there, on the left, you'd expect to have a one dip between 3350, ah, let me make that a little cleaner, sorry about that, 3350 and 3500 
wave numbers. Now, if you look at the right, you still have the amine. But that carbon is not bonded to two, I mean, that nitrogen is not bonded to two carbons, it's bonded to one, two, three. And so you would not have these absorptions anymore. After all, those absorptions were the shadows cast by the bond between the nitrogen and the hydrogen. We do not have a bond between nitrogen and hydrogen anymore. And so that dip that you start with here would not exist in the product and it would disappear. So you'd have no dip between 3350 and 3500 wave numbers. And so that's how you can distinguish these two molecules using IR spectroscopy. You might have noticed that there's another functional group here. You have these sp2 hybridized carbons with hydrogens on them. So you'll have this dip at 3100, but that's going to be in both of the spectra. So that wouldn't help you distinguish one spectrum from another. So you, if the reaction went forward completely, you would have no dip between 3300 and 3500, 3350 and 3500. And if it didn't work, then you would have one dip between 3350 and 3500. So you can monitor the progress of that reaction using IR spectroscopy. All right, let's apply that same sort of thinking to the next one. All right, what do we have here? Well, we have a carbon to do oxygen double bond. So um, we have this carbon to oxygen double bond. And that means that on the left, in the spectrum on the left, uh, we would have an absorption, should have an absorption around 1700, maybe 1720 <clears throat> wave numbers. The only thing is, that shows up in the products also. You also have the carbon-oxygen double bond there, so the shadow that that casts isn't going to help you tell the difference between the two molecules. You might say, okay, well, in the reactants we have this triple bond, so maybe we have the signal for an alkyne this right here, but you do not. Not in the reactants, because this is between an sp hybridized carbon, an alkyne carbon, a carbon in a triple bond, and a hydrogen. But neither of these carbons here have a hydrogen, and so neither of them will have this shadow at 3300. So the only shadow you'd really see here would be this one at 1700, 1720 for the reactants. How about the products? For the products, in addition to that carbon to oxygen double bond, you have a carbon to carbon double bond. In other words, you have an alkene. And this one will show up because it has a hydrogen. An alkene, that sp2 hybridized carbon, that's a carbon in a double bond, when that's bonded to a hydrogen, that bond between the carbon and the hydrogen absorbs at 3100 and so you would have we have that bond here and so that bond will absorb at 3100 wave numbers so the way you can tell the difference between the reactants and the products here is the reactants is uh, both of them will have an absorption in 1720 that doesn't help you too much but the reactants would not have an absorption at 3100 this would not and the products would have an absorption or a shadow cast at 3100. And so that's how you can tell if the reaction has happened or not, how you can monitor the progress of that reaction using IR spectroscopy. Okay, how about this one? Well, it's actually really the same. Um, if you look here, we have a couple functional groups. On the left, we have the carbon, oops, carbon to oxygen double bonds but the product has those two. So those aren't going to help us tell the difference between these two molecules. Um, so how about, what, what's there, is there that's different? Well, in the reactants, we have this triple bond, whereas in the products, it's a double bond. You might say, well, okay, alkyne, maybe it has that alkyne absorption, but it does not, because both of these carbons already have four bonds to other carbons. They won't have this bond to a hydrogen, which is the bond that absorbs at 3,300. 
The product, though, does have hydrogens on it. Notice hydrogen and hydrogen. Just for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to just look at one of these. This bond right here is this sp2 carbon to hydrogen bond that will cast a shadow at 3100. So this will have 3100 wave numbers. It'll have that dip. Whereas here, no dip at 3100 or 3300. And so that's how you can tell the difference between these two molecules. The re if the reaction doesn't happen, then when you take the IR spectrum, you'll see that there's uh, no dip at 3100. But if the reaction does happen, then you'll see that there is a dip in the IR spectrum at 3100. Okay, next one. Now this one, you can just write Na, non-applicable. You don't have to worry about this one. This one really has to do with resonance. Um, if, you, if you are good with resonance, if you mastered that topic in Organic Chemistry 1, then you would know that the electrons here can go onto the oxygen. You get one resonance structure, you'd have a positive charge here, and then this, that'd be an allylic positive charge, so the electrons can move over. So you have resonance structures that Sp um, spread the electrons out, and you draw those resonance and when you draw those resonance structures, the true structure is the average of them all. And so this bond here is not really a double bond; it's something in between a double and a single bond. And so that means that it'll be that absorption will be less than seventeen twenty. Right? Remember, the single bonds are way on the left, or sorry, way on the right of the spectrum. If you have the wave numbers, and then you have the double bonds next to them. So if resonance makes this bond here something in between a single and a double bond, you'll take an absorption that used to happen at 1720 and you'll move it over and it'll be something like 1680. But in order to solve this problem, and so that has resonance, whereas this other one doesn't have as much resonance, and so it'll, you'll have a higher a higher absorption energy because it'll be close this is closer to being just a double bond if you didn't master resonance though not to worry for this particular test that's not the focus and so this particular problem is not applicable we'll get to resonance in a future chapter and you'll, you'll want to review it in more detail we'll review it together in more detail so that's how you can monitor the progress of a reaction uh, using IR spectroscopy